What do a washing machine and the history of American information industries have in common? They both operate in cycles. As Tim Wu coins in his remarkable look at the history of information industries in America, the cycle is the quote, oscillation of information industries between open and closed. This tendency seems to underlie all great American innovation in information organizations, from the telephone, to the radio, to the internet. But what does that mean for modern industry in America and the people who drive it? Let's look to Wu's book to find out. One of the first monopolists of information was Theodore Vail, who almost single-handedly saved the Bell Telephone Company and its subsidiary, AT&T, from bankruptcy in the early 20th century. As Wu notes, Vail is one of a type of special mogul who, quote, defines a new type of industry, integrated and centralized. Moguls like Vail appear in most information industries throughout the U.S., from David Sarnoff and his contributions to radio and television, to Adolf Zucker and his work with Hollywood and Paramount Pictures, to J.C.R. Licklitter and Douglas Engelbart for the internet. Although not usually the inventors of their technologies, these moguls, or progenitors, bring their respective industries to full force in American culture, usually through either ruthless business practices, connections with government, heavy financial backing, or a combination of the three. But what does this have to do with the cycle? Each of these important communications figures has impacted the way their industries move between open and closed, and sometimes back again. The efforts most of these men made to centralize their industries have invariably closed down periods of openness in information industries throughout history. As Wu says, quote, The shift from an open industrial phase to a closed market usually begins when capital interests buy the potential for vastly increased profits through monopoly, or when they demand greater security for their investments. This occurred with Vail, Sarnoff, and Zucker, as well as with modern conglomerate organizers in the 1990s and 2000s, like Ed Whitaker for AT&T, Steve Case for AOL, and Gerald Levin for Time Warner. With government backing, these closed and centralized industries often proved nearly impregnable. As Wu points out, it often takes a revolution to change the way information industries function. More often than not, these revolutions are not necessarily technological advancements, but are rather changes to government policy. This occurred in the late 1940s with the breakup of vertically integrated Hollywood firms and the 1950s and 80s with the dismantling of AT&T. This is also evident throughout the relative deregulation of the 1980s that allowed for the internet boom and the emphasis on competition in the government of the 2000s. By changing policies about big business and competition, the government has helped right some past wrongs with information industries. And although the efforts haven't always gone according to plan, the shift toward greater accountability is an important step. Although the history of information industries in the U.S. has been categorized by the cycle, in The Master Switch, Tim Wu asks, is the internet a true outlier, as some suggest, or will it fall victim to the same movement from open to closed that has befallen other industries? As of yet, no one knows, but Wu isn't necessarily optimistic. Although hypothetical, Wu suggests that in order to prevent the centralization of the internet, the U.S. should adopt what he calls the separations principle. This principle is defined by, quote, distance between each of the major functions or layers in the information economy. It involves self-regulation by businesses, government non-interference, and a consumer willingness to live with the minor pitfalls of decentralization. Overall, Tim Wu's book is a comprehensive approach to information industries throughout the history of the United States. Worth more than a glancing look, the master switch can help us learn from our past and plan for our future in a world where information industries have increasingly open and unpredictable futures. Will the internet prove susceptible to the cycle? The only way to know is to wait and find out.